everyone, welcome to today's video. We're going to talk about Goldman Sachs. They spoke about Bitcoin, but why is it important? So welcome. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell button, like it as well. It helps if you like the video. Let's get a million likes because why not? It's funny. <laughs> Anyways. Let's talk about what happened yesterday. Goldman Sachs spoke about Bitcoin. You're probably wondering, why is JP Morgan on the page? Well, this is important. First things first, social media. I've been talking about this a little bit. Market, how the market kind of is. Obviously on Twitter, on my Instagram and stuff like that, I'm going to get quite, quite out there with views and opinions. Now people like it, people don't. I don't care. Hi, trolls. Hello, I know I'm a bit, bit, bit mex buy bit shill and I always get the same people commenting on my videos because they have nothing better to do with their lives other than laugh at other people. Anyways, JP Morgan in 2017 actually said this, not JP Morgan, obviously he's been dead quite a while, but the CEO, J Jamie Dimon, um, said this, that Bitcoin is a fraud and will eventually blow up. <laughs> More on this in a second, but it is worse than the tulip bulbs. It won't get, it won't end well, someone will get killed. Yeah. Three months later, all time high, right? You can get the picture of what's happening here, right? Ooh, wait for it. JP Morgan then, literally Valentine's Day 2019, started to create their own coin. JP Morgan coin for GMP, Payment Solution Coin. Yay! Yeah, can you see the pattern here? I hope you do. So, let's talk about what happened yesterday because this is very important. So, Leaked documents, that's a clue, of what Goldman Sachs really think about Bitcoin. So basically, it's kind of like lip service, it's kind of like FUD. It's also very, very interesting to understand the dynamic of how institutions look at assets before getting positioned. Key word there, positioned. So, I'll look through some tweets on here because it's quite interesting. Obviously, Cameron Winklevoss, Bitcoin does not generate cash flow like bonds because it's not a bond and the sky is blue. They mentioned that Bitcoin as an asset is similar to bonds. We'll come on to that in a second. Goldman Sachs in 2019, 2.8 billion in Bitcoin were sent to currency exchanges from criminal entities, right? Fun fact, Goldman Sachs <laughs> felicitated 6 billion in money laundering <laughs> between the, the 20... Oh, fuck me. So, yeah. Double standard much. You can just read it. It's obvious that we all know that fiat is the cash king of criminality. We know that if you go to an ATM and you go and buy drugs, there's no way of tracing it. There's a, there's a factor of like privacy with cash in reality. Unless, you know, as you move it around, if you got cash given to you and you spend it, no one really knows. Let's be honest. All kinds of other stuff. Here. Fun fact, just over a decade. <laughs> Bitcoin is 2.5x gold, <laughs> Goldman Sachs market cap. BTC's volatility is a defense weapon that has allowed it to hide in plain sight before slaying the vampire squid for good. It's absolutely massively important that people remember that. And that is why I think people get put off by the fact of the element of volatility and why things are often untouched. But let's look at this leaked PowerPoint presentation about Bitcoin. Now, <clears throat> we've got here... They are used as a medium of exchange. They serve as a unit of an account and they are a store of value. Yeah, in some ways this is what we're talking about. Now, this is where it kind of is. <laughs> this one was obviously what one of the Vinko Vostrans had said. Does not generate any income through global economic growth. <laughs> and the best one, do not damper volatility historically 76%. Now, you got to look, they've obviously pinpointed this, but you got to look overall at the fact that it is the best performing asset out of anything going in the world, essentially, within its 10-year life cycle. Let's just say 10 years to round it up. It's scary that the Dow Jones is down for the year, Bitcoin is up for the year. Most years, Bitcoin outperforms gold, it outperforms the Dow Jones, it outperforms the Nasdaq, it outperforms freaking everything because it's so mental. However, there is big dumpy days and people do shit themselves. That just happens. But it does not show, um, obviously this is too early to tell, but it feels like they are getting primed and ready and positioned for a buy order at some point. Now, 
I'm just going to keep going through this. Obviously, we've got the attention span of a goldfish in terms of cryptocurrency. What I mean by that is people only look at crypto when it's high. I don't mean to insult people, but there is people on my channel that ask the same questions only when we've pumped. It's not beforehand, it's always after, right? It's just one of those things that happens. But it's the same for institutions. JP Morgan came into the space when Bitcoin was around $6,000. At the time, it was all-time highs. It was like, oh my God, this is euphoric. Obviously, we went to 20K not long after that, which is absolutely barbaric in itself. But if it wasn't for them talking about it in such a way, it created more exposure, but I think this won't be the same sort of exposure. We've already, we've all, we've seen the pattern. We know it's going to happen. Exposure in Bitcoin. We failed to create a higher high. We're going to come down. This is perfect for Goldman Sachs to put their hand in the fire a little bit and go, oh hello. Now, obviously, they spoke about here in terms of the enormous attention that it's got. Not that much, but they've also got this. This is the illicit activity. This is the main bit talking about the Ponzi schemes, talking about the ransomware, which is all of this is sort of stuff that happens in any market. It doesn't matter. It happens in the Forex market. It happens in property. It happens in freaking everything. Literally all the big things that you got in the world. There's always scammers. There's, there's always a scammer in, in a suit looking to get you. Like that's just the way it is. It's just how it happens. But in cryptocurrency, it's very, very easy to remember the past in terms of the Silk Road debacle. You've got the, the likes of obviously, you know, the drug trade the dark net, all kinds of stuff like that, and as well as like other things such as BitConnect, USI Tech, you know, whatever I mean, Ponzi scheme there was back in the day, one, one coin is another one. So it's very, very easy for people to light the fire of cryptocurrency to a new audience because you've got to think as well, in the JP Morgan sort of sector, in the Goldman Sachs sort of ballrooms and stuff like that, they've obviously been talking about Bitcoin, they're like, oh, Bitcoin's a bit... Ooh, hello, it's a top performing asset. Yeah, 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 all crinkly shit, right? They're going to be talking, well, let's get in. Whether you agree with me or not, and if you're bullish or not, or whatever, no institution the size of Goldman Sachs, the size of like the JP Morgans out there and all, all kinds of banking sectors, they're not going to buy into Bitcoin at 9K, 10K, 11K. Let's be honest with ourselves here. This is all a plan. This is all sectored around prime article-driven media giving you food, essentially. Because all, we all know that this is obviously, yeah, it happens. But when you start telling this to new people who have not invested in Bitcoin before, especially people with money, they'll go, I'm going to wait for it to come down. If that does come down, whether it's legitimate or not, and they buy in from a lower point, they're gonna make money regardless because it will go up. They know that they know the history of Bitcoin. They know how good it is. They know how good in terms of an asset, not not so much performance, but as an asset. So it's really really interesting. Now, cryptocurrency infrastructure is still young and susceptible to ha hacking. There's all the top of hacks. The top of all the hacks in the world of like everything, all the exchange. Now, the problem is exchanges are hackable. It's obvious, but the Bitcoin as a blockchain <clears throat> or any blockchain is a lot harder to hack unless unless you got someone from the inside that can do it but it's very very hard to infiltrate anyways but when you look at cryptocurrencies this is why i always recommend ledgers there's a link below to ledgers and all kinds of stuff like that because i want people to be safe you can't just put your money on an exchange just let it sit so all of this here is really really interesting to talk about in terms of obviously equity bubbles the, the, you know the whole element of like the bitcoin bubble and Market cycles move in, in, in certain ways. I'm going to talk about market cycles briefly at the end, but ultimately you're looking at all these percentages. Look at this, the NASDAQ, the Tulip price, Bitcoin, Ether. We know it's a top performing asset, crypto mania. So absolutely pivotal that you understand the enormous kind of factor that this is Goldman Sachs literally getting ready to get into position. In my, that's my personal honest view. They wouldn't be talking about Bitcoin in such a way over a keynote sort of thing announced to the world and Bitcoin's mentioned in it over five slides. The facts of it are not great. There's a reason for that. They are looking to get in. This, I think, is the start of the market turnaround. I think overall the stock market will eventually turn around. It, it, it seems to be hanging on to a fart right now. I just don't understand why that's still going up. But same with Bitcoin. We look like we're going to be ending this up, up, 
uptrend and we're going to go into a proper downtrend and we're going to run down to localized supports and then maybe some monthly levels might be hit which is around the 4k by the way not financial advice i know people are going oh we're never going to go below 7k trust me bitcoin can do whatever it wants if you've got the likes of goldman sachs jp morgan and all the institutions betting against us retail investors little fucking minions here we will lose massively it's all about being ready for it it's all about being ready Buy low, sell high, take profit. I don't believe in hold It's a pain in the ass. But finally, I want to mention Crypto Whale. He put a tweet out the other day, uh, yesterday actually, or last night. Really, really good. Market cycles, we've topped out and we're now entering a return to normal. This is mainly for the main markets, but I actually think this is kind of similar to what we've got in cryptocurrency, where we've had that massive up cycle in terms of the start of the year. We've went, oh, up to 10K, and then we obviously, we dropped massively up to 10K, yeah, all that good stuff. But it looks like we are going to drop off. And when you look at the traditional markets of how high, obviously, a 10-year bull run and all kinds of stuff like that, it's crazy. But you've got COVID-19, you've got tensions with the war, war, trade tension war sort of shit going on with China and the US. You've obviously got all kinds of issues, like political issues in America. It's absolutely crazy. So just be safe out there. This news, in my viewpoint, is long-term bullish, right? It's another institution to the belt that could be dealing with Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in the future, but they're not going to buy at 9K. They're not going to buy at these levels. They're going to wait for it to come down. If you start seeing markets just drop, there's probably a reason for it. So there we go. Today's video boxed off. I hope you enjoy. Obviously, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Bye.